general, it can be quite difficult to prove that a polynomial is irreducible over the rational numbers. However, uh, there is one useful trick that works for many important polynomials, and that is Eisenstein's criteria. So um, here's the statement. Suppose you have a polynomial f uh, t equals a0 plus a1 t plus a n t to the n and let's assume that the coefficients are in integers in z t and suppose p is a prime such that The first condition is that p does not divide a n. So p does not divide the leading term of this polynomial f. And the second condition is p divides all the other uh, coefficients. p divides a0, a1 up to a n minus 1. And the third condition is that p squared does not divide a0. Then the theorem says that f p is irreducible in z t. Um, the proof will use uh, reduction modulo p uh, and proceeds by contradiction. So suppose uh, we have a factorization f t equals u t times b t. Uh, where u t v t well, we need to prove that there is no factorization in Qt, so we need to take Ut and Vt in Qt. But then to apply reduction modulo p, we would need these factors to actually have integer coefficients. So we fix that by using Gauss's lemma. So you look at the polynomial Ft by Ct, where Cf, where uh, Cf is the content of f, that is the GCD of all its coefficients, then this is... Um, ut by cf vt we can take it like that so ut by cf and vt are both uh, polynomials uh, with rational coefficients and then by gauss's lemma well this ft by cf is a primitive polynomial and so by gauss's lemma we can write this as a times ut by cf times vt where a times ut by cf and vt are integer polynomials. So we can assume that ft is ut vt where ut and vt are have integer coefficients. Just by replacing u by a ut by cf and v by uh, bvt i guess and now we have f bar t this is just uh, this is just uh, a0 bar t to the n no other terms survive because of our hypothesis on f all the coefficients of f except the leading term are divisible by n is equal to u bar t times v bar but this means that uh, all but the leading coefficients of u and b are divisible by p. All the coefficients of u and v except leading coefficient are divisible by p. Okay, in this factorization, we are assuming that u and v are non-constant polynomials. So in particular, that means that u of 0, which is the constant term of u, is divisible by p and also v of 0 is divisible by p. But this implies that f of 0, which is u of 0 times uh, uh, v of 0, is divisible by p squared. p squared divides f of 0. But that is just a0 
which contradicts this last hypothesis that p squared does not divide a0. And so we conclude that f must be irreducible contradiction. Let's look at uh, some examples. So uh, here's a simple example. Just take the polynomial uh, t to the 4 plus 50t squared plus 30t plus 20. Now if you take p equals 5, then you see that p divides all but the leading coefficient of this polynomial. p squared does not divide 20. So this is irreducible. In QT. But more interesting are uh, examples, um, uh, a very interesting class of examples uh, is this lemma. If P is a prime, then T to the power P minus 1 plus T plus 1. So this is the polynomial t to the power p minus 1 divided by t minus 1 is irreducible. You may look at this and say well all the coefficients here are 1 so how could I apply uh, Eisenstein's criterion. So the trick is apply Eisenstein's criterion after substituting for t, t plus 1. Now the thing is if you take a polynomial and transform the variable like that uh, if, if the original polynomial was irreducible, then the transformed polynomial would also be irreducible. So, so apply Eisenstein's criterion to t plus 1. So let's, let's call this polynomial, well it turns out that this polynomial is actually the pth cyclotomic polynomial. I'll explain that to you in a moment. So this is certainly a polynomial that is satisfied by um, a a primitive pth root of unity and it's irreducible so it's the pth cyclotomic polynomial. Uh, <clears throat> so apply Eisenstein's criterion to uh, after shifting the variable to t plus 1. So what we have is uh, uh, t minus 1 times phi pt by definition is t to the power p minus 1 right. And now let's just change the variable from t to t plus 1. So if I put that, then I get phi p t plus 1 is t plus 1 to the power p minus 1. But now if you look at this t plus 1 to the power p, this is summation k goes from 1 to p. I'm removing the k equals 0 term because it will cancel out with this minus 1. p choose k by t raised to k uh, times t raised to k. But now note that p divides p choose k for all k uh, between um, z except for 0 and p. And so what we get is that uh, this all, all but the leading term of this polynomial, right, but now maybe I should look at uh, divide by this t, so let me just, uh, uh, so what we get is phi p t plus 1 is summation k goes from 1 to infinity, p choose k t to the power k minus 1. Now this is a polynomial of degree p minus 1, its leading coefficient is 1, and all the remaining coefficients are divisible by p. And what is phi p0? The constant term is just uh, p. So that is not divisible by p squared. And hence, by Eisenstein's criterion, phi p t plus 1 is irreducible which means that it's equivalent to saying that phi pt is irreducible see if you have a factorization of phi pt 
say phi p t equals u t v t then phi p t plus 1 equals u t plus 1 v t plus 1 so you can get a factorization of phi p t plus 1 and you can do the reverse by substituting t minus 1 so the irreducibility of these two polynomials is equivalent so what we get is that phi p t is irreducible now recall that we were defining zeta p to be the primitive pth root of unity so this is e to the 2 pi i pi 2 and uh, this uh, satisfies zeta p 1 plus zeta p plus zeta p square plus zeta p to the power p minus 1 you can use a geometric series to sum this if you like is equal to 0 so use the formula for geometric series to check this therefore zeta p is a root of uh, this polynomial phi p t which is also irreducible uh, in q t so what this means is uh, phi p t is the irreducible polynomial Of zeta p. In other words, uh, if I look at the subfield of the complex numbers generated by so this is inside uh, the complex numbers generated by zeta p, this is isomorphic to qt mod phi p t, which implies that the degree of this extension. Is equal to the degree of this polynomial phi p t which is p minus 1. So primitive p root of unity lies in uh, is lies in a field extension generates a field extension of degree p minus 1 over q. We can just tweak this uh, method a little bit to get uh, in fact uh, more uh, cyclotomic polynomials. So uh, Uh, but okay, before that, one more corollary. If P is a prime and zeta P is e to the 2 pi i by P, um, is constructible then P minus 1 is a power of 2. Why is this? Well, uh, of course, we've already seen that if you have a constructible number, then uh, it generates a field extension of degree equal to a power of 2. So P minus 1 has to be a power of 2 by this earlier calculation. Okay, so uh, the converse of this theorem is also true, but that is harder to prove. That is, if p minus 1 is a power of 2, then zeta p is constructible. Okay, now uh, we'll try to get some further mileage out of Eisenstein's criterion. Uh, let's ask, what about, so we've looked at uh, p roots of unity. What about prime power roots of unity? What about zeta p to the power m, where m is a positive integer. Now, let's see if we can guess something here. So, what is zeta p power m? This is e to the 2 pi i by p power m. What we have is that zeta p power m to the power p to the power m minus 1 is e to the 2 pi i by p power m whole to the power p to the m minus 1 is just e to the 2 pi i by p which is just zeta p 
So zeta p to the power m raised to the p power m minus 1 is zeta p. And so this will satisfy the irreducible polynomial for zeta p. Therefore, zeta p to the power m satisfies is a root of the polynomial. Uh, phi p t to the power p to the power m minus 1, which is uh, just the polynomial uh, t to the power p minus 1 times p power m minus 1 plus t to the power p minus 2 p to the power m minus 1 plus dot 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 plus t to the power p to the power m minus 1 plus 1. And so the question is, is this really the irreducible polynomial of zeta p to the m or not? And the claim is that this is irreducible. The proof is exactly the same. Apply Eisenstein's criterion after replacing the variable by t plus 1. Um, slightly, you know, it's, it's a different polynomial, so obviously uh, you need to check it again. But the proof is uh, the same in all respects. I leave it to you as an exercise to check. So what we are saying is that this is in fact the irreducible polynomial of the p to the mth root of unity. So what we get is phi p to the m the p to the m cyclo cyclotomic polynomial is the p cyclotomic polynomial evaluated at t to the power p to the power m minus 1. And so what's the degree here? The degree is uh, p minus 1 times p to the power m minus 1. So we have that the degree of the field extension generated by p to the power m root of unity over q is um, p power m minus 1 into p minus 1, which I like to write as p power m times 1 minus p inverse. Um, in particular, if you take powers of 2, then you just get 2 to the power m minus 1. The p minus 1 part goes away. Mm -hmm.